Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Uh, so our last video covered unboxing two water blocks from EK, one of which was a GPU block for a 1080 Ti for the win. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and unbox the for the win card, uh, take a quick look at it as it is the white elite version, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and install the water block on it. Um, this is all going into the hardline build that's coming up. Um, recording this a few days beforehand, I'm going to release it about halfway through that build uh, so that there's not a huge gap in content while I'm putting that uh, PC together since that is going to be my main editing PC for the channel. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So for all intents and purposes, as far as you can tell, uh, this does look like a normal FTW3 from EVGA, uh, apart from one spot on this box. Right up here you can see a white triangular sticker. Uh, this actually notes that this is one of the white Elite versions. Uh, so EVGA is selling uh, Elite versions are actually slightly less expensive uh, that you can get in about four or five different colors. Uh, you do need to be an Elite member, although it is not hard at all to be an Elite member. I'm sure the majority of you would probably already qualify. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So we're met with the usual uh, paperwork, driver CD. Uh, also, uh, let me read this out for you. Thank you for choosing EVGA. In order to provide improved heat dissipation, some areas on the base plate are silver, aluminum in color. See the diagram. This is normal and provides the best thermal interface possible. And then it gives you a diagram. Let me focus in on that. So it gives you a little diagram of what uh, should be silver. I'm not 100% sure why they're telling you this. I guess in case you take it apart and see some differences, uh, you want to know why you see those differences, uh, this will be the reason. We've actually got some really fancy uh, small cell foam uh, and then the card itself. Alright, and that is what the card looks like. Uh, so as you can tell, obviously the shroud itself is white and that's really the only difference between a normal FTW3 and one of the Elite versions. So the Elite uh, again, you can choose in about four or five different colors, and that's only going to change the color of this shroud. Uh, if you move around to the back side, it has the usual uh, back plate. Nothing different here. Uh, it does have some RGB lighting right here, as well as on the face of it. So what we're going to start by doing is removing all of these screws to detach the stock cooler. Uh, that's basically every screw on the back side here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take out these smaller ones first. Uh, there's also one hidden under the warranty sticker, so you will have to break that warranty seal to install a water block. So one thing to note is that on this upper corner, uh, so closest to the I.O. shield and to the slot, uh, one of the screws does actually have a nut on the back side. Uh, so you will need to take precaution and look for that. Make sure you do not lose that. Uh, you would need it if you ever wanted to reinstall the cooler. That being said, uh, EK has sent their own mounting hardware, uh, so that will get replaced uh, anyway. So, as of right now, we have all of the screws removed except for the four that actually surround the GPU itself. So, I'm going to go ahead and start trying to get this back plate off. Uh, you'll have a little bit of resistance, especially uh, with EVGA cards because they have now decided to put thermal pads everywhere. Uh, so, those thermal pads are going to uh, somewhat stick things together. Uh, so, you definitely want to watch out for that. 
Uh, if you're getting a ton of resistance, uh, don't continue to try to pry it off, but there will be some resistance uh, just due to those thermal pads. And as you can see, those are the thermal pads that we have on the back side of this part. Uh, we will be reusing uh, this back plate. I don't know if EVGA provided thermal pads for the back side of the card. I don't believe they did. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that you hang on to these thermal pads. Uh, try your best not to damage them. We'll move that out of the way. And next we're going to go ahead and separate this portion. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how they've implemented the wiring for this LED. Uh, so you definitely want to be careful with that so you don't end up breaking the uh, LED. Alright, so that one made my butthole quiver just a bit. Uh, it was a little bit tighter on there. Uh, again, it was just the thermal pads. Uh, but you do want to be careful uh, as the LED is on this end. So we're going to rock it up like this. That will show us where our LED is plugged in. And we'll go ahead and safely unplug that. You do want to plug, not plug, you do want to pull by the connector itself rather than pulling on the wire uh, for fear of actually pulling the wire out of the connector itself. So again, you can see we have massive amounts of thermal pads on the back side of this card. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one and put it back on the back plate uh, so as to keep it off of the card while I'm installing the water block. You can see we have three Phillips heads that we've pulled out uh, across the middle. We're now going to have to remove the two hex heads around the DVI port. So the next step is going to be uh, unplugging any of the wires that we do have access to. So if you look right here next to the two power connectors, we have one there that we might be able to access. Uh, flipping it around to the other side, uh, I see three here. One right here, and we've got two side by side right here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and try to unplug those before we separate the card. So one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind uh, if you're doing the same install or just trying to take this particular card apart at all, uh, you do have a base plate uh, that's sandwiched between the cooler and the card itself. Once you get all these screws out and you start pulling on things, uh, it kind of looks like you want to pull the base plate off with the PCB, uh, when in actuality you're only wanting to take the PCB off. Uh, you'll leave that base plate with the cooler. Um, if you try to take the base plate off with the PCB, it's going to look like there's some screws that need to be detached uh, that you don't really have access to, uh, when in actuality it's just the PCB itself that needs to be removed. So once we got everything out of the way, it does pop free uh, fairly easily. Um, keep in mind we do still have at least one wire that we know of that we need to disconnect. So we've got it separated here. Uh, we want to try to minimize it banging against the cooler now that we have it separated. Um, so let's go ahead and see what else is still connected. Uh, so it looks like this one wire that we previously could not get See if we can get that one out now. All right, got that. And I believe there is one more around the back here. So we can go ahead and separate the two. And then 
will try to fold it back this way and that exposes our last wire that needs to be unplugged. And there we go. Okay, so again, you want to try to not damage any of these thermal pads. Uh, whenever you do go, if you go to reinstall this factory cooler, you will need these thermal pads. Uh, I knew that this card was going to have quite a bit of thermal pads. I uh, did not expect quite this much. Um, so any of these beige areas that you're seeing, it uh, looks like almost all of them stuck with the cooler, uh, save this one and one of the memory modules. All of that is thermal pads. Uh, so you want to try to take care of those when you go to store this cooler. Uh, I would definitely suggest wrapping it in something so that it preserves those thermal pads. Next, we're going to go ahead and install thermal pads. Uh, so you're going to want to take very close, 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 close look at the instructions for this. Uh, some of them come pre-cut. Uh, as you can see, there's little indentions in these. These are actually going to go on the memory modules. Uh, and then these two are almost pre-cut uh, for what they need to be. At least uh, number two is. So number two should go on about as you see it. Uh, number three, actually, there needs to be a small strip cut off of it, and it will go on to, uh, I believe, one of the MOSFETs that's actually located over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these installed. One thing that I want to uh, make sure I inform you of and that you keep in mind when you're installing these thermal pads, uh, try to do a little bit better job than I did of not fingering the side that you've peeled the plastic off of. Um, there is still plastic on this side, so we will remove the plastic off of these before we actually mount the water block. But you want to try to keep your fingers away from the mounting points of the thermal pads after the protective layer has been taken off because the oil and grease on your fingers uh, can definitely inhibit their uh, conductivity of heat. So you want to try to minimize uh, touching them as much as possible. So let's go ahead and apply thermal paste and then we'll be ready to install the block. So the way that EK recommends is doing a vertical line, horizontal line, and then crisscross. Uh, and I am going to stick to that with this. Um, as you can notice, there's still quite a bit of thermal paste around the edges. It's just incredibly hard to get that thermal paste out because you do have uh, little electronic components around the die itself. Uh, so it's really hard to get that out. Um, it's not hurting anything there. Uh, it'll hurt me when I sleep at night and can't stop thinking about the fact that I couldn't clean it out. But beyond that, it is harmless. Uh, you do want to use a little bit more thermal paste on a GPU than what you would be used to using on a CPU. Our next step is going to be to go ahead and mount the block itself. So you want to make sure that you've cleaned the mating surface of the block. Uh, make sure that it is free of fingerprints on this side of the acrylic because once you install it you won't be able to get underneath to clean it. And then you want to go ahead and line up the holes and set it down on the card itself. Once you have it on the card, you want to go ahead and flip the card over while being careful to make sure that the block stays in contact. And 
and once you have it flipped over you're ready to reinstall your GPU screws which I'm going to go ahead and do and then we'll reinstall the back plate. So I wanted to wrap things up by giving you a few of my thoughts on this water block. Uh, I feel like the quality is superb. I'm very happy that I went with EK for both water blocks, not just the GPU, but also the mono block for the CPU. Uh, I've had nothing but stellar customer service from EK. Uh, keep in mind that EK hasn't sponsored any of this. I've purchased all of this out of pocket as usual. Um, but I feel like I definitely should give EK a recommendation because they have been top-notch uh, in everything that I've purchased from them. Uh, and that's going to wrap things up for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure that you get subscribed if you aren't already so you don't miss out on the hardline build. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next one.